presuppositionalism um, to, to be polite makes me feel physically ill as a philosopher. I really hate it. It seems that what you're arguing for is that there must then be some being that serves as the foundation and guarantor for logic. No, it would be that it, it is logic. Um, like, I mean, like it's in kind of was it like John chapter one. And so I'm arguing that existence necessarily contains that structure. And that structure, when we apply it to existence itself, is everything because it's its allness it can be particularized and made concrete i would argue this would be jesus christ and the unity of these two would be god i know this is i know it sounds like a jump i know i know but bear with this i'm arguing that this logic isn't something that we are exporting to reality it is reality that when we look at reality and we see that it conforms to these laws it must necessarily conform to these laws. It's not that, and, and this is why science can give us objective truth. Uh, you know, they, they, that we can analyze and come to rational propositions through the application of logic and logical argumentation, which will lead us to the point of going, for example, humans are made of flesh and blood and flesh and blood is made of, you know, these elements and these elements are essentially birthed from stars, which, you know, we can trace back to a big bang. You know what I mean? And that causal chain necessitates that there is a causal inferential or logical inferential link between contingent events. And that is what I'm saying is necessarily true, that we cannot free ourselves from the a priori or a posteriori manifestations of the same thing, which is a logos. Um, now, obviously, you know, you might say, well, why is that a Christian God? And, you know, like you did actually say, I think you said, like, Christian God applies many different properties, for example, to God, which I think we can go over. Uh, but I don't want to tangent that just yet, but I'm willing to defend. Um, but what I am really defending is that it is a grounding in of itself. And I think that's what's reflected in the Trinity. And it's not something that it's not enough for reality to simply be this way. It has to. It, it's not sorry. It's not enough for to simply say that reality has this logical foundation. I don't know where it came from, you know. And these are the facts. You have to show that, for example, universality is ne necessitated in terms of logical thinking. That particularity is necessitated in terms of logical thinking, and that individuality is therefore necessitated in terms of logical thinking. Which means you have to essentially create a syllogistic argument defending each and every single one of those premises in relation to each other and show that it can only be understood in relation to each other, which is exactly what Hegel does. Now, if you were to say that that those specific logical, I don't want to say, I, I, I mean, you could say persons if you were to, but logical moments exist, you are going to find that they are distinct. Um, they are distinct, but mutually dependent moments of a same substance. And that substance, that sort of foundation of reality, if we will, or even, you know, that which explains all of reality is what I'm arguing God is. And, so, and that's that's what I'm, I'm really getting at. So I want to make, I'm, I'm genuinely trying to make sure that I, I follow and get this as close to right as possible. Um, it seems like that you're looking at the problem of We'll set aside excluded middle for now. I don't know how you or anybody else can do that, as I feel that it is um, essential and obvious once you once you have identity. I mean, for me, the the foundations of those are best represented by a single circle with a and not a, and that that is a visual description of the all three of them. But if if my position is that that logic may not have a ground beyond the fact that it is just merely true, that it is, uh, we, we have no way to show that it is universal, that it is inviolate. And yet I'm willing to accept that it is because as you pointed out in your opening, you would have to assume that it is in order to prove that it's not essentially. And it seems that what you're arguing for is that that's not enough. And so let me go ahead and claim that there's must then be some being that serves as the foundation and guarantor for logic. Is that? No, it would be that it, it is logic. Um, like, I mean, like it's in kind of, was it like John chapter one, where it's like, uh, it was with God and he was God. Um, in the original Greek, it's logos. And if you look at the ancient Greek conception of logos, the ancient Greek conception of logos is a grounded uh, logic. It is logic 
it is the logical reality. Uh, that's what I'm arguing God is. So like, um, for example, you if we were to talk about allness, for example, universality, which uh, as a concept is a necessary concept, I would say, for, for knowledge as, as a whole, um, you would say something like being. It would be like abstract. It would be very abstract. Um, like the Paramedian is that which must exist, right? Is must be, right? I think is the argument that he gives, right? What is must be. Um, that's what I would say, for example, universality is. But to give universality any sort of, to, to know of universality, you'd have to be able to particularize it. You'd have to say that like this is universal. And when you say that this is universal, you have to give a concrete observable existence so that you know, you'd have to be able to observe a being being's existence. Um, that would be whether it's through rational means or like through direct observation empirically, which I think is really just a sort of ex, uh, a, a development of rational means. But that's that's separate. And I don't want to go down the sort of Augustian point that epistemology and even in the ways in which we observe the world are structured in such a way as we can logically detect, let's say, patterns or like pattern orientated and that these patterns are there to be detected. Um, but that, that's essentially what's going on. But when we do observe reality, we can we observe particulars so i'll be like you know, this cup this glass or whatever right. that's a particular and in particularity it's conceptually distinct from anything else so logically we could see how these relations work if you say something's allness it's something's identity in relation to itself something's particularity would be its identity in relation to something else it's um individuality would be the unity of those two logical moments. And so I'm arguing that existence necessarily contains that structure. And that structure, when we apply it to existence itself, is everything because it's its allness. It can be particularized and made concrete. I would argue this would be Jesus Christ. And the unity of these two would be God. I know this is, I know it sounds like a jump. I know, I know, but bear with us. But, 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 I would say that the unity of these two is spirit, uh, and that spirit is a necessary logical relation between that which is abstract or universal and that which is particularized um, in a way that's more sort of, you know, easier to conceptualize in an, a, a normal sort of everyday level. We would say that this is a glass. When we say glass, the word glass is a universal. It applies to all glasses. It's not specific to this glass. And the concept is applicable to anything which would necessarily conform to the logical properties or like to the properties that are revoked within the application of the concept. The particularity of this glass would be its actual existence. And the, uni the unity of the two would be being able to say that this is an individual class, individual glass which means that it is a member of a species, that it can be contained within a set. So if I was to say that there was a set, that was the set of sets, that would be existence, there is the set of sets, and that the set of sets necessarily must contain itself and be united with itself in order to be the set of sets, that would be the logical relation between God and itself. Yeah, so I, we began with this, me, me trying to figure out, and I'm still... At some point, maybe not even in this debate, but at some point we're going to have to get into um, tossing out the law of excluded middle. But yeah, we can, we can. If so, I'm I'm fine with. We'll just go with logical grounding. Um, and I tried to suggest that you were trying to find a solution to a problem that may not be a problem, may not have a solution by applying God to it. And then your reply was that God is logic, except that logic, as we're describing it, isn't an agent. It isn't a uh, a, a being. It doesn't have uh, desires and properties beyond this. Um, so I don't know how one can say that God is logic. And then it seems, and I'm, I'm not trying to be insulting, but it seems like you've taken a look at the difficulties in epistemology and decided that hey, it'd be really cool if I could map the Trinity on, not as a metaphor, but as an actual. And so then particularity becomes Jesus Christ and unity becomes the Holy Spirit. So you've gone from, hey, we have identity and non-contradiction to 
these things are essentially the instantiation of God the Father, God the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. I would, I would say that this isn't necessarily uh, just epistemology, by the way. I'd say that it's, uh, I mean, it is and it is not. It's metaphysics and epistemology, because I'm arguing that this is necessarily part of reality. So, for example, if I was to say to you, <clears throat> um, is there a necessary first cause? Would you agree with that? Do you believe that there is a first cause to reality itself? I don't know, but let's just say you, I, you I said know. yes. I don't okay. know. So if you say yes, so if we were to chase that causal train down, can it can it end in a contingent object, a no. t- contingent being? No. So it, it, it's, it's something that which necessarily must exist. And in that, in, would you agree that it must therefore contain the possibility for everything which, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, what is it, comes after it? I can't, I can't use the right word. Well, when you say contain the possibility, the, the thing is, um, I, I don't know that it would necessarily have to contain the possibility for everything that comes after it, because I don't necessarily, so one of the problems, I, I don't know if you, if you saw, um, and, and my apologies for bringing up debates that you weren't a part of, but oh, in a recent debate that I did with, uh, Hussein, he tried to do an argument from contingency to get to the God of Islam and argues, it, it's funny that you're sticking specifically with the Trinity because that seemed to be his biggest sticking point was that the Trinity was just absurd. And so he, he's going to stick with Islam, but on this notion of, uh, uh, of there being a contingent being, I, w- I would agree that if in fact there isn't an infinite regress, and if in fact there must be some first thing, that it must necessarily be non-contingent. But I don't necessarily know that there needs to be merely one non-contingent thing, nor do I think that these the one or more non-contingent things uh, individually must include the po- the potential within them for everything else apart from in a like i don't contain the potential to fire to 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 create fire without other like a match and fuel and and those things and i don't create those things and those things are not a part of me so if there was a a single non-contingent thing um then obviously everything comes from that but the interactions between those things are you counting those as potentials within it because if so then yes well, yeah, I mean, like, look, I mean, okay. like, look at it like this, like, look at it, sure. look at, you know, if we were to say, like, even in physics, right, like, the, it, you know, you see the gravitational potential energy of two bodies in space, for example, we, we would count that in terms of calculations, even if they aren't, let's say, like, colliding or, or like, coming into collision, you could, you could, you can actually, like, you know, it's like big, big G, you know what I mean? And, and then the energy specifically of that body in relation to that uh to another body would then be mapped as a form of acceleration right well, Do you know it, what i mean it, but what, what i'm saying is so so like if you look at you, you striking the match like the potential for you to make the flame from the match and, and that your causal interrelation with that is necessarily included in your action like right but i'm, I'm talking about i didn't i also did. didn't make the match and so no but somebody did like and that's I, I, just, I, yes and if i could have finished the sentence that's literally what i was going to say sorry next. oh sorry i didn't mean to interrupt so what this is why I'm saying I'm not I'm not sure that it needs to go back to a single contingent, um, but perhaps a collection of things. But even if we do go back to a single contingent, I think I, I probably would favor. I, I know there are some that, that that are favoring mathematics as the foundation. I think mathematics is is uh, derived from logic, which is why I just stick with logic. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, uh, but uh, that then. That's fair enough. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, in terms of like, if we were to go back, then yeah, we say that there is a necessary first cause. Can we? So have how do knowledge? we get to Christianity? So what I would say is, in terms of particularizing any any specific being, we have to give a kind of causal account in order to give to convey what I would describe as the essence, the idea, the um, the meaning of something. So when I say that this is, you know, when I, if I was to say that, you know, this is a microphone or whatever, or give a name to an object, I'm actually describing essentially logical properties within that object that infer its logical relation. Uh, and in physical terms, it's physical relation with other objects. That is uh, something which, it, which re- implies a relationship to something which preceded it, which is why Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas in the cosmological argument and Leibniz show that 
contingent beings can only be understood in relation to that which uh, which was its antecedent um, in the first place. So it's not just that you, it, it's more of the fact that now we have, if we were to say that there is this sort of universality or, we, or there is this first cause, that this first cause necessarily is used to understand something. So even if we just say like, let's say that this first cause is just the particular starting event, it's particularity, we'll say, the particular starting event, in order to give an ex explanation for every event past that, we are going to assume universality. It's the same thing with uh, uh, universality. We're going to have to assume particularity. So if we accept that there are these three logical relations, that they necessarily exist, that their existence is necessarily within the universe itself, then we have a logos. Now, the only thing that I think that separates, if we accept the existence of a logos, the only thing that would separate a more secular or atheistic position, and let's say my position in terms of being Christianity, would be whether this is a mind, which I think you brought up before. Whether we can accept that this logos is a mind, or, you know, it would be, which is essentially whether well, it's the mind of God. Sorry, I... It, I I heard a pause, my bad. Uh, no, no, it's okay. I think that's a, a, like the first step would be to show that, yes, it's a mind. And then there's about, well, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to exaggerate too much, five billion steps between <laughs> it's a mind to it is the holy trinity of the, the true Catholic church, according to the Athanasian, I mean, that's, there's a lot of steps between whether or not it's a mind to it's, it's not a only a mind, topic. but it's this particular mind.